Hi folks, it's your old buddy Luke Clayton and welcome to our outdoor show today. I'm down at the Buck and Bass Ranch. Jeff Rice, my buddy that owns the ranch, he and his wife Demi. Jeff is coming down in a couple of hours and joining me for an afternoon hunt. So we're going to have a good show lined up for you today. It's pretty much down to earth stuff like we always try to do. And uh, you know, I have been shooting the big bore air guns now for about eight years. And I want to talk to you a little bit about air gunning. In my writing, you know, I'm actually I'm a hunting editor for the only big bore air gun magazine, I guess, in the country, uh, Air Gun Hobbyist. And I'm not an expert in the intricate workings of, a, of an air gun, but I do know how to shoot them and hunt with them. And that's kind of what I write about in my articles, you know, the actual, you know, things, tips that'll, that'll help you put game in the on the meat pole actually but this gun right here <clears throat> is the Texan now I want to if, if a lot of you folks I do get questions uh, through my newspaper articles and all a lot about air guns are they powerful enough to kill big game etc etc when I get through talking to you I'm gonna give you a good idea what they'll really do now this Texan by Air Force air guns was the first big bore production air gun uh, in the world, I guess. First one that I, I ever knew about. Now the original model, which looks just like this. Same look. Now this is the carbine, but it, the, uh, the, uh, the other version has got a barrel out probably six or eight inches longer. I like the carbine because it's easy to handle. But the original uh, Texan pressured up through a valve right here to 3,000 PSI. Now this one will pressure up to 3625, 3,625 PSI. And that will push a 520 grain bullet to the max. It'll push it out to uh, a whole bunch of foot pounds. I mean over 700 foot pounds. Now that's a big bullet folks. You know, uh, you talk about a 520 grain bullet. That bullet's as big as your thumb now I, I started, I've hunted a bunch with these. I probably killed 30 hogs with them in the past years. But I've always shot a bigger, heavier bullet, a 350 grain bullet. Well, I've discovered something that I like better than the 350 grain bullet. And that's these bullets right here by Nielsen Specialty Ammo. You can check them out online. N-I-E-L-S-E-N, -E -E SpecialtyAmmo.com. These bullets are 240 grain hollow point bullets. I'll show you a close up of them in a little bit. Not a great big heavy bullet like a 520 grain. But the reason I have went to these, these 240 grain bullets, is simply ballistics. I mean, this thing out at 100 yards now with these lighter bullets, uh, 100, 100 grains lighter than what I was shooting, 110 grains lighter lot flatter tra trajectory. Now, one question I get asked a lot through my newspaper columns and through the magazine, you know, how far are these guns accurate? Well, they're accurate for way farther than I shoot game with them. Let's put it like that. I've got some friends that, <clears throat> that are long distance shooters that shoot these guns. I mean, they'll group way out there. But the truth of the matter is, with any air gun, after especially with these this more powerful valve, or this different valve and this more pressure on this tank, the tank is the stock on these Texans right here. Perfect design on these things, in my opinion. But you know, with this now, I've got a, an honest 125-yard gun and an expert that really wants to push it and use mill dots on his scope, I think 175 yards. I, 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 I'm not gonna hunt with these for game animals much past 100 yards. 
uh, that's just me. But people do, they are capable of taking game farther than that. Um, I zero, <coughs> excuse me, I zero it at 100 yards. And basically I'm good out to 125, just a center of shoulder hold, using these 240 grain bullets. Now the heavier bullets, they're going to drop faster. They are also going to create more energy, foot pounds of energy. You can figure that out pretty easily. You know, a 520 grain bullet going pretty fast, say 750, 800, I don't know exactly how fast they shoot them. Uh, it's going to fall. The trajectory is going to fall quicker than a 240 grain bullet. Okay, actually hunting with these things. Now, this afternoon I'm going to be hunting hogs. It's actually, uh, you know, deer season has not, it's just about to open here, rifle season. That's when we can use these in Texas to hunt deer with them. Um, I've killed a bunch of hogs now. Shot placement on hogs, <clears throat> I don't know, I just, the, the one thing you can do wrong hunting hogs is think it's a deer and shoot behind the shoulder. Uh, if you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you do shoot behind the shoulder, chances are you're probably not going to recover that hog. Uh, center of shoulder shot, the heart on a hog is lower than a, than a deer or most exotics really. Low in the chest and forward, so where I shoot hogs, and especially with a tack driving rifle like this at yardages, I know where to hold. Uh, I hit them right behind the neck, somewhere in the, in the, or right behind the jaw, somewhere in the neck. And the last one I killed out here at the Buck and Bass Ranch, I shot him. He, he never moved. I mean, I was actually stalking, and I got him up about probably 45 yards, and uh, I hit him right there. But I've killed a bunch of them like that. That's a tip that will help you when you're hog hunting is, is shoot forward. Don't think you want to put it behind the shoulder because there is no man's land on a hog. You're probably not going to kill it if you shoot it back that far. But in the neck, uh, you know, you've got the jugular, the spine, uh, you've got it all right there. If you, chances are real good you're going to drop him if you put it right. At, and actually an angling to your shot a little bit can drive on through between the shoulders and to the, to the vitals, you know. So <clears throat> that's kind of what I wanted to go over with you on the, the air guns. Um, I know this one is, will develop, I don't know exactly, but 750, so I'm just guessing on that, or recall foot pounds of energy. But I do know these, these bullets right here are what I'm gonna be using with the Texan because they're just Nelson specialty ammo. They're known for being really good bullets. You can, they're conical in the back, uh, hollow point. Uh, people ask me a lot, well, how much um, uh, do your bullets open up? You know, do they expand when they hit? Well, a lot of times they don't, to be quite frank with you. You're not pushing these bullets fast enough to, unless you hit the shoulder blade or something like that, to always open them up. But the hollow points help. Um, now, tracking, uh, you know, I bow hunt a lot, a great deal. And I love to bow hunt and I love to shoot. This is kind of a step up for me from bow hunting. Now, bow hunting is just, I mean, I get this, I sometimes feel like I've got a 105 howitzer, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, it just opens up more distance for you to shoot. Uh, to, to take game, but um, it's not uncommon for an animal, a deer, hog, exotic, to run a ways with shot with a 30 out 6 for that matter, but it's kind of common, uh, heart and lung shot, usually they'll run a little bit with, uh, with a big bore air gun. That's been my experience anyway. Um, that's okay, I mean, you know, you just watch when make the shot and see the direction, you know, that the animal's going and try to pick up a blood trail or just watch and be real quiet. Just like bow hunting, actually just like almost like center fire hunting. After the shot, I always stay put with this or with a bow or with a center fire for that matter. I stay put for at least 15, 20 minutes, unless I see the animal go down before I take the trail up. A lot of times an animal will expire. He'll, a hog might run out there 50 yards and then he, he doesn't get up. So. That's a good tip for you right there. 
But we've got a lot more to our show coming up. I don't want to, I think I've pretty much covered this. Uh, if you're looking for a big bore air gun, this is the Texan, this is the carbine. It's a little shorter, you know, than the, the original version. I guess the, the original Texan is, is probably eight inches longer. And that does, you do lose a little uh, velocity when you go with the shorter barrel, but not much. In other words, this gun here is still developing over 600 foot-pounds. I'm sure I haven't really done the math on it, but way more. It, this one here with this new tank, which is the new tank and valve, is generating way 100 foot-pounds more than my old uh, uh, carbine. So trust me, plenty to anchor the biggest hog. I'll tell you a quick story. I had a buddy, I have a buddy, Mark Ballett up in East Texas, uh, BNC Outfitters. I didn't write about this because of obvious reasons. A zebu is a form of, of uh, bovine, it's, a, it's a, a cow, cattle, but he, they get some kind of mean, the bulls do. He had a young zebu bull on his, he had, has an exotic ranch, BNC Outfitters down in Groveton, Texas. Well, this bull was chasing people around up there, and hunters trying to get up in a tree or get to their stand. It wasn't an old bull, it was still good meat. But I had a buddy take a Texan, and this is exactly the way it happened. One of these, not this particular rifle, but one out like it, 45 caliber. And uh, we went looking for that bull with Mark. Now Mark had a, I think he had an alt six backing us up, but I let my buddy, he'd never, experience the power of these things i let him shoot my texan and we guys i remember we were 35 or 40 yards was in a, a pine plantation <clears throat> and he got up got up downwind this bull was as wild as any deer <laughs> that you'll ever see i'll tell you i mean if you think cow that's <laughs> yeah it was a bovine but it definitely wasn't the jersey cow in the, in the feed lot you know it's a wild critter he made a shot perfect shot right on, a, on this one right through the heart and lungs. That bull ran probably 25 yards and was head over heels. So these things have a bunch of power. Now you can check them out, uh, airforceairguns.com and, and go there and, and, and do study them out. Do you want to shoot a long barrel one? Maybe. Maybe that extra few uh, feet per second is important to you. Do you want a carbine like I got? Hmm, I'd recommend it. But whatever you like, uh, they're all accurate and they're great guns. And I'm going to show you a picture of the bullets here in just a minute. But uh, maybe I can just bring them over there to you. But uh, airforceairguns.com is where you can learn about these. Let's set this right here. Uh, I'll put these bullets up here. I'll just bring it up here to you. See if you can see these. If not, I'll shoot you a little quick picture of it. But these are our Nielsen Specialty Ammo. Concave on the back, hollow points. Stick it up here where you can see it. This is what I'm shooting right now, and it's lighter by 110 grains from what I've been shooting. Very, very accurate, though. So let's get on with the rest of our show. I thought, look for old Jeff to show up up here anytime. Thank you for sticking with me. I thought I'd give this little tutorial and all of you that haven't shot the big boy air guns, maybe you'll learn it. Maybe you've learned a thing or two. So thank you a lot for watching. Well, folks, I hear Mr. Jeff coming and yep, here he comes right here. Let's see what kind of good news he's going to bring us. I bet he's ready to do some, do some hunting and maybe some filming. Hey, Jeff. Greetings. All right, buddy. Hey, bud. How you doing? I'm good. You ready to hunt? I'm ready to you, hunt. You look like a, does he look like a guy ready to hunt or what? I'm ready to hunt. <laughs> well, I've been down here a uh, full day ahead of you, buddy. Okay. And, uh, been looking around. And? And what we need to do, possibly, is hunt across the creek. You remember where I shot that hog with the bow? Yeah. I know yeah. you do. Oh, sure. A lot of hog sign there. Just is a there? ton of hog sign. Good. Yeah. The, yeah Good. That's it's across the creek. We wouldn't have a whole lot of trouble bringing him out over that over that bridge. You know, that little yeah. bridge. There, yeah. Sure. If we sure. get one. So. Uh, so what do you think? You want to take the, the the Air Force air gun out? You're going to take the. Oh yes. And and the that uh, Nielsen specialty ammo. Okay. That Good. Uh, 240 grain bullet and. Yeah. Uh, 
I've got, Jeff, I brought about 40 pounds of corn in the truck there. Okay. Uh, you want to go back there and just heavily bait it? They're coming in anyway, but that you one know, might be a good plan. You know what let's do? Let's, let's do that. Let's take a couple chairs down there. We've got a box blind folks down there, but sometimes it's just fun to sit in a chair, get off in a distance, oh, yeah. and we'll yeah. get a little shooting stick and take that, that Air Force air gun down there and, and uh, see if we can't get on something tonight. Hey, That'd be kind of fun. That's good. The hogs are there. And, you know, we talk about a lot about scouting for hogs. Well, we know they're coming in. Yeah. But uh, so let's, let's take some of our uh, South Seduction, that yeah. uh, Texas-raised oh, yeah. hunting products, Put a canister of that out. That corn. Mm -hmm. uh, all we need to do is get the knife sharp. I think and that that, <laughs> that Texan. Uh, Fire up the smoker. And, and that Texan is. I've got it shooting a really good group. So beautiful. The shot's going to be maybe 50 yards, maybe across the creek. So put the chairs out now. Then when we go back in, we'll go in stealthily, sneaky. Ease on in ease there. On in yeah. There. Boy, I tell you what, can't beat this weather, can it's, you? I've, I've been down here a wow. day before Jeff, and yeah, I'm completely relaxed down here. Unbelievable. This is like a therapy. It's okay, well, uh, jump on the buggy, and I'll throw the corn in, and you'll get the chairs. Let's right? do that. Let's do okay. that. Okay. Folks, we'll be back. We'll take a commercial here, and then we'll be back. We're going to, uh, we'll bring the camera down. We'll kind of show our setup and stuff, and then uh, we'll slip back in there later this evening, and we're going to have some fun. Right, let's, buddy? let's do it. Let's buddy. do it. All right. Hi folks, it's your old buddy Luke Clayton and this ain't your grandpa's pump-up air gun. This is the Texan made by Air Force Air Guns and it's the most powerful production air gun in the world. Uh, a few years ago I started shooting these probably, well when they first came out I actually had a chance to test, they didn't really need any testing, but to shoot one of the 10 prototypes when they first came out. Now this is the improved model, this tank Pressure's up to 3,625 PSI. This gun will develop, I believe it's five, uh, 750 foot-pounds of energy shooting a 520 grain bullet. So this is your big daddy of air guns. If you want to get into hunting or shooting air guns, you know, you don't have to shoot a 520 grain bullet. I shoot a Nelson Specialty ammo bullet that's I think it's uh, 340 grains but here you go check these out online uh, you can go to airforceairguns.com and check them out but this is the one I've hunted with a lot I probably killed 30 hogs and a bunch of exotics and I'm going to get after the deer here in Texas this year with it airforceairguns.com well good morning friends from the Buck and Bass Ranch before we head out on this uh, hunt with Luke and I just want to kind of give you an update. We put this food plot in. If you remember about two shows ago, came in here, just lightly scraped this ground. We put out, put out some uh, um, oats and some triticale and some radish and some different things in here and we've got it growing. And I just want to show you a little bit of video and kind of give you an update on what, what what's going on out here. This stuff works and it's little effort. If you've got a piece of ground where you can just do this is just a small patch here, but I've got a tree stand right up here, right over the top of it, and I'm going to show you some video here of how quickly these food plots begin to work once you put them in. It's been two weeks. You can see it's we've got good growth here already. Let me show you. I'm, I'm going to show you where the deer have been chewing, you know, the tops off here. So stick with me. So as you can see here, folks, the deer are chewing the tops of these off. Our oats are probably oh three and a half, four, four inches tall now, and those deer are coming in here within two weeks. They're in here chewing on this stuff, so that's that's the reason why I do these food plots. They don't take that long to do, and they are amazingly effective on bringing deer in. So let's slip over. Let's take a look at some video here of the deer that uh, I saw this morning that came in here and started feeding on this food plot that quickly.
So how was that for some video? So that was pretty cool seeing those deer. I watched them for 45 minutes, almost an hour this morning. Just just feeding, feeding in here. They went in and ate a little bit of corn, milled around. I was hoping, nothing better than a live decoy. I was hoping a big buck would come in, but it didn't happen. I don't know, it's late morning now. It's time for breakfast. I haven't even had my coffee yet this morning. So we're going to head back and um, we'll uh, catch back up with Luke and we'll head down to the creek and we're going to do a little hunting with that Air Force air gun. So stick with us. We'll be right back. Have you been successful in your hunts? If not, maybe you need to change some of the products that you're using. Today, I want to talk just a little bit about Texas raised hunting products. Luke and I use these exclusively and we use them because why? They work. Uh, number one, it's, it's paramount that you, you cover your scent. Uh, Texas Raised Hunting Products makes Scent Guardian. We start with this product. We spray down and it removes, completely eliminates any odor that you might be carrying into the woods with you. We start with this product and they have an array of products for, for all hunting situations, whether it's for buck scrapes, uh, they have the little canisters here, the buck DNA, we put these out, and the animals, I mean, it, they react to these. We've got some uh, sow seduction that um, we use, brings in both boar and sow. They work extremely well. Uh, I encourage you folks to, to get out there and try some of these products. Use what works. We have been very successful using these products. Again, it's Texas Raised Hunting Products. You can find them at TexasRaisedHuntingProducts.com or just as easy to reach out to CatfishRadio.org to learn more information about these products. Again, increase your odds in the woods uh, by using these things. So, good luck and happy hunting. Well, folks, what we have here is the inflamed sow seduction Texas raised hunting products. Jeff and I have used this stuff. It works. Uh, we're back here across the creek. We're going to show you just a minute the, uh, the creek and where we're going to actually set up back here. <clears throat> what I'm going to do, I've got this thing opened up. I want to get the top off. This is the the scent wafers, if you will, with the scent glands and everything, that it's going to attract the hogs. And these things bring in sows as well as boars, but it's it's going to I have a lot of confidence. What we're going to do, I've got the vent open where this thing will start emitting scent right away. We're going to put this one right here on top of this log. And we're expecting these hogs to come in <clears throat> from back in this heavy stuff. This, the bottoms are back in this direction back here. So let's put this one here. Uh, Jeff's going to show you where we're going to set up back here across the creek. And I'm, and I'm going to go back and set out one more in the direction that we're going to be. In other words, get the hogs up in here in this area. And then we're going to put one more just to keep them, keep them in the area. So let me put this one up here. This one's up high, the one we set. It should dispense the set pretty well. We're going to put this one on the ground right over here close to where I'm, we're going to be. So here we go. Okay. I say that we sneak out of here, go set our Chairs up, get back in here late this evening, shoot us a hog. Let's do it, buddy. Let's do it. All right, let's get out of here. Okay. Okay, folks, we're all set up here. We're got the chairs here. The creek is right behind the camera, and on the other side of the creek is the feeder. So we're all set up. We got our sow seductions placed out there strategically, and um, that feeder will go off about 5 p.m. So we're going to be right back here with an Air Force air gun, and we're going to make it happen tonight, buddy. It's going to happen. I will add this. We are so far back in here, folks, that they have to pump daylight into us. <laughs> and as the old country people used to say, <clears throat> scrape owl doo-doo off the clocks to find out what time it is. That's right. We're back in here in the Sabine Bottoms. Perfect setup. Uh, you know, if <clears throat> you never know how hunts go to unfold. You never know. And I quit trying to second guess it, but all the pieces of this puzzle we have in place. I mean, it would surprise me if we don't get one, uh, yeah. get a shot at one. 
So let's make it happen, Jeff. Well, bottom line is we're going to have fun trying. Uh, who could not enjoy being out here? This is so nice. You beautiful, bet. beautiful. Well, folks, I'm going to flip the camera around real quick just so you can kind of get an idea of what we're looking at here. So uh, we'll be back here this evening and uh, let's have some fun. Huh, we're going to do it. Have right. to. We'll be back. <clears throat> well, Jeff, we're back. Folks, I tell you what, if you're a hunter, and I bet you are, <laughs> it came so close this evening to putting this Texan to work. We would love to be showing you a picture of a hog, and we saw three or four. There were three or four came up behind that feeder. It was getting real dark. Yep. I could see him. I had my Zeiss binoculars, so I, I was able yep. to see him real well. Luke was having a hard time seeing him in there, but they were a little bit skittish. They I were. Know, yeah. yeah. Well, there's so many acorns right now, yeah. and of course we had the feeder and we had the, the scent out, and, and uh, you know it was a perfect setup. Yep. Had it had the old scope cranked down to three power. Yep. You know, if they had come on in, we could have closed the deal. But you know, that's, that's hunting. hunting. That's I mean. hunting. <laughs> you know, we, when with Jeff and I started out, I said, yesterday I could have took this rifle and shot a nice boar that was scent marked in a sapling. Mm -hmm. I was bow hunting at the yeah. time. Well, that's how for it deer, works. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but I said, you know, if we'd have had had the shot, had the uh, the Air Force uh, Texan out there yesterday, it would have been a chip shot. About 50 yards, the boar standing. He stood there yep. for a minute and left his scent on this sapling, but. You know what? It's been fun, buddy. It's I mean, always a I'd, good time. <laughs> if I knew how this hunt would have been unfolded, I'd do it again. Oh That's yeah, I'd truth. go back down there again. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> it's just, it was an absolutely beautiful night oh. sitting out there. It just At first there was a little wind swirling, yeah. and then it became absolutely still. Still, yeah, yes. still as can be. But well, uh, I guess we should say hasta luego to all our buddies yep. this week, Jeff. Once um, again, thank you all for joining us uh, each week. We just love bringing this stuff to you. And we appreciate you, you know, liking and sharing our stuff and uh, passing it along to other folks. And uh, we look forward to seeing you right back here next week. Huh? You bet you. Another we'll we'll fun be here. show. We'll do it. We'll be. Uh, we'll be after them again, Jeff. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, bud. <laughs> Until next week, folks. Be safe in the outdoors.